Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of my What is Linear Algebra series. Today, what is the symmetric algebra? And I want to explain today that this is actually, again, a slightly fancy or scary term for something really, really natural, namely for polynomials and vector spaces. Um, we will see. So let's just jump right into it. And really, I would want to look at polynomials. And for me, a polynomial, let's say on this slide, um, whatever my scalars are, let's say my scalars are R, and I would like to write down polynomials into variables, which I call X and Y. So for example, five times X1 plus uh, four times X2 would be a polynomial in X and Y. Or I could write down a polynomial with symbols. So instead of five times X1 or four times X2, I could let my symbols be A and C, and because they are polynomials, I can multiply this whole stuff um, with another polynomial in those variables, x1 and x2. Uh, and let's say I would like my scalars to be called b and d, and I can try to multiply it out. But it's just multiplication of polynomials. All of you know how to multiply polynomials. So what you would get is, um, you get something on the diagonal in, in this multiplication table fashion, and you get something green on the upper part of the off diagonal, and you would get something red on the lower part of the off diagonal. And what will end up in the green part is basically xi, xj, if I would think of more variables, where um, basically by definition, it's the upper part, so i is lower than j. On the lower part, you would pick up xj, xi, where still i is lower than j. And the reason I would like to make this distinction is because I can think of two ways of, of, of basically looking at those polynomials. I can say they are just polynomials. So I can say, this is my right-hand side. So let's give it a color. So this is my blue. So I can say x1, x2, is actually equal to x2, x1. So it's commutative. It's, it's like you would think about polynomials, right? You can also have the green part. You can think of anti-commuting polynomials. And this just means x1, x2 equals minus x2, x1. Uh, so that's kind of what you can do with a very natural notion of, of having kind of polynomials in in this case, two variables but make sense for any number of variables. Um, and you would then write down the multiplication of them. Um, in the blue setup, you would get this this result. You just would, would just factor everything out. In the green setup, you need a little bit more careful because, for instance, um, this green part here would come with a plus because let's say x1 is x1, x2 is my choice for, for representing x1, x2. And the red part comes with a minus, basically just because x1, x2 equals minus x2, x1. And this minus will, will show up here. So here's green, here's red. There will be a minus in between. And on this side, you won't see a minus because, uh, uh, well, x1, x2 is just x2 is one, so green and red. And if you look at, well, there's another funny thing. So on this side, on the green side, if you have x1, x1, uh, not x1, x2, if you have x1, x1, it actually is x1, x1, but because of your, <laughs> your property of anti-commutativity, it's minus x1, x1. And that's really bad because what I've just written down is basically um, x equals minus x, which means x is zero. So on, on this side, squares basically die. So x1 squared is zero, x2 squared is zero, which means um, the diagonal dies, right? The diagonal dies. Why on this side, the diagonal is just what it is. Anyway, um, so that's what I just said. Um, you see a diagonal survive on and on the green side diagonals die. And the only, again, I said again, the only difference between red and uh, red, <laughs> blue and green is that um, 
that I impose on one side just polynomials, variables commute, and on the other side, I would impose variables anti commute. Right? That's, that's really the only difference variables anti commute and variables commute. And what you would observe is the following funny thing. The only thing I did is A and C are just the coefficients of, uh, in both cases, the same, the coefficients of um, the first column of, of a matrix, say, and B and D as a coefficient of a second column of a, of a matrix. And when, whenever you multiply things out, what you see in front of x1, x2 is a mixed polynomial is essentially either the determinant or the permanent of the corresponding matrix. So depending whether I want to throw in a sign to my polynomials, I get the determinant or the determinant. And the difference is, I said again, on one side, I have commuting polynomials, no signs. And on the other side, I have anti-commuting polynomials, signs. Uh, here's another bigger example. For example, if you, I only do the determinant, the, the, per, uh, the, the permanent. The determinant would be the one with signs. So the permanent of this huge matrix is just what it is. That's the result. And what I would do is I would write down um, the first column as a polynomial now in three variables, x1, x2, x3. I would write down the second column as, as, uh, uh, as a polynomial in those three variables, b, e, h. And I would write down the final column, the third column, again, in the same way. I would multiply it out. I would look for the coefficient of the mixed guy. And that's, that's, that's a permanent. And all I've done is, I've done co computations in what is called the symmetric algebra, which is just a polynomial algebra. Um, so don't be, don't be confused by the name. It's really just a polynomial algebra. You, you want to distinguish it because you want to define it in vector spaces, as you will see uh, in a second. But it's really just a polynomial algebra, and you get the permanent by multiplying out polynomials. You would get the determinant by multiplying out polynomials, but now in anti-commuting variables. Okay. Um, let's count. Let's count dimensions um, because counting is always fun. Um, so, if you've seen my was some anything about the exterior algebra, then you would get this result: that the dimension of the exterior algebra is two to the n, and each graded piece. And with graded, I just mean I have this funny symbol k here, and I only mean degree polynomials of degree k. Each graded piece is a corresponding binomial coefficient n over k. For the symmetric algebra, which is really almost the same definition, they're almost the same definition, polynomials in anti-commuting variables or in commuting variables. Um, there's a huge difference which, which will appear. So the symmetric algebra is infinite dimensional and each graded piece is looks like a binomial coefficient, but it will grow. So it will get bigger and bigger. And we can see this in, in, uh, explicitly in examples. So here I have com computed the dimensions of the corresponding spaces. And let's just um, look, let's say, at degree three. So up to linear combinations, and with linear combinations, I would mean something like this one is included here, or you could put a five here if you want, whatever. This one would be included here. So up to linear combinations, what are the degree three polynomials I could write down? Well, I could write down the cubes of the, my three generators. So I have three. The cubes of my three generators. I could write down the mixed polynomial, x1, x2, x3, I have one of it. Or I could write down um, kind of polynomials where one generator is squared and there's another generator which is just itself, it's not squared at all. And I get six possibilities of them. Also, I get in total 10 possibilities. And it's not hard to see that um, actually the dimension is given by, by, by this binomial coefficient. Uh, in my case of three variables, so three plus k, k is a degree, minus one over k. And this grows um, arbitrarily big. So it gets arbitrarily big, so the, whatever. 
the 500 symmetric power, uh, the 500 degree of the symmetric power is of whatever uh, size, it's just huge. Which is in contrast to the exterior algebra where all of the diagonal terms, my terminology from before, everything here in purple would die. So it's, the symmetric algebra is much, 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 much bigger than the uh, exterior algebra. And I say it again, the only difference between them is whether you throw in a sign or you don't in the definition of commute, commutation of polynomials. Okay, so uh, the formal definition is you would do something with a tensor algebra, you would impose um, this relation, so variables commute. Um, yeah, and th the main reason why people would call this a symmetric algebra, and that's how, how maybe one should think about it, is that you can write on the symmetric algebra of a vector space. And this just means that you kind of fix the basis of your vector space, which you call x1 up to xn, let's say. And then the symmetric algebra will be exactly the polynomial ring in those variables. So the symmetric algebra of a vector space is a way to multiply vectors. Why? Because you can now express any vector, let's say v, as some linear combination. Now let's let's do the Let's just do the, the, the uh, two by two example. X2, for example, and uh, I can express W in something similar, um, B times X1. And this is, of course, my matrix A, B, C, D that I had before, uh, plus uh, D times X2. And I can just multiply them together using those two expressions. So, this guy times this, oh, sorry, not this one, times this guy as I did it before. So I can multiply vectors. And that's probably why people call it a symmetric algebra and not polynomial algebra, because you can kind of define it for any vector space. But it is just a polynomial algebra in the, in, in the choice of basis of your, of your vector space. Um, yeah, let me finish by, um, well, the determinant was something geometrical, uh, some geometric properties like areas of certain sort of rectangles. The exterior algebra also comes from geometry. The permanent comes from combinatorics. And yeah, the symmetric algebra also comes from combinatorics. And basically the point is um, that symmetric polynomials are uh, part of the symmetric algebra. In a, in, a, in, a, in a very natural way. And symmetric tensors then as well, because it's, it's kind of all the same, the same concepts. It's just, just different names for the same beasts. And symmetric polynomial is just a polynomial that is fixed by permuting the variables. So here I have an example. So I claim this polynomial is fixed by permuting the variables. Okay, so I, I've just chosen one of the possible permutations of variables. So this guy, permutes x and y and keeps, uh, sorry, permutes x1 and x3 and keeps x2 fixed, right? So for instance, if I would apply it to, to this one, I would get this one because x1 becomes x3. So this polynomial on itself is not symmetric because it becomes something different, but the whole beast is symmetric. So let's follow it. So this one becomes this one and this was a really bad choice of color. So let me. And the final one becomes this one. But anyway, this is just reordering of terms. So it is actually fixed by, uh, by this permutation. And it's not hard to see that it's fixed by any permutation of variable. But this will kind of mean what I, what I mean. Like, like fixed points in, in geometry are very interesting. So fixed polynomials um, should be also very interesting. And yeah, they actually have a, have a name for it. For, have a name, right? So everything that has a name is, well, not necessarily interesting, but it's potentially interesting because someone thought it's interesting enough to give it a name. And in this case, it actually is. And they're called symmetric polynomials. And let me just warn you that not all uh, poly symmetric, not all polynomials in the symmetric algebra are symmetric polynomials. Uh, they're just much, much, much smaller. So I've written here, uh, well, for instance, in degree one, 
you just have one symmetric polynomial, but you have three, um, three, three basis elements in the symmetric algebra. But anyway, the point is symmetric polynomials li naturally live in the symmetric algebra, and you can do a lot of combinatorics with the symmetric algebra. Uh, let me summarize. The symmetric algebra is basically a way to write down polynomials and vectors. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time. <laughs>